Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Vasily Triant, Vice President of Cisco's Customer Journey Business Unit. I don't need any applause, but thank you, thank you. I am uh, excited to be here today. Thank you all for having us and, and coming in. We're gonna be talking about digital workplace transformation and I'm gonna have my colleagues join me in a moment, Javed Khan and Sandeep Mera from our collaboration group. One of the things that's really exciting about what we're doing within collaboration at Cisco, transforming your workplace together, is that we're bridging all these amazing technologies that we have together. So while I'm the vice president and general manager of customer care and contact center at Cisco, we're taking those technologies and bridging them with calling and with meetings and with teams and devices to bring you better solutions. So it's one portfolio that we're bringing all these assets together. So while I'm up here talking, you're gonna see a lot of great things about how we're bringing this portfolio together. First thing I wanna talk about is where we're going with what we call customer journey solutions. And this is traditionally what we called our uh, contact center business. So we continue to invest and build on our premise contact center solutions. As you know, contact center express and contact center enterprise However, we also have our enterprise cloud solution called HCS for Enterprise and our multi-tenant pure cloud platform called the Customer Journey Platform. One of the unique and interesting things that we're doing with these technologies is basically taking the modularity of these cloud services, bridging it across your on-premise investments that you may have today and creating hybrid services. So these are essentially cloud services and advancements that have the speed and agility that you see with modern platforms but bridging across your premise systems. This allows you to make your own transitions as you want rather than being forced by vendors to get new functionality to dump your legacy investments. And this gives you flexible transitions. So essentially, we continue to drive investment on our premise portfolio, bring hybrid services to your existing business, and also enhance pure cloud platforms across the business. All of this delivered in very commercially available models of what we call flexible transitions or flex, things for you to explore to basically take your premise investments all the way into the cloud at the pace that you want. Also, on the calling side of things, we have a broad portfolio of calling options from our Cisco call manager, which is our traditional premise portfolio, to HCS, which is large enterprise scale calling platforms delivered from the cloud, to one of our acquisitions we made a year ago, which is Broadsoft. Take all those calling applications that are available to you, combine it with a secure global platform, comprehensive collaboration suite, which you're gonna see from my colleagues in a moment, integrated devices, whether that's phones, video, WebEx boards, bring intelligence to it, so apply what most of the industry calls artificial intelligence. We're gonna apply intelligence across the board to calling, care, meetings, and then give you flexible migration paths, allowing you to choose the time when you wanna move from your premise to your cloud at whatever point, preserving your investment. With our cloud calling platform, it is available in three geo-redundant regions today secure data traffic within those regions, but offering service to multinational customers globally. And then we continue to invest in data center expansion within other regions of Canada, Japan, and additional services available in Europe that we're exploring at this point in time. This is the investment that we're putting into our calling portfolio as we move forward, as well as our care. And what I wanna do is transition it over to Javi Khan to talk to you a little bit more about uh, meetings here. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you, Vasily. Thank you. Does your meeting experience, does your meeting experience look like this? How many of you have seen the new WebEx meetings experience? A few of you? How many of you are using it? A uh, few of you. I'm going to show you the new WebEx meetings experience. My name is Javed Khan. I'm the general manager for WebEx Meetings. And as, as you can see, I love WebEx Meetings. Over the last year, we focused on significantly improving our meeting experience. We focused on two things. Still, the two most important things when it comes to meetings. Number one, how do you schedule a meeting? And secondly, how do you join a meeting? And we've made some significant improvements there. We, we invented something we call as at-meet. 
you can use the word at WebEx also. All you have to do is add the word at meet or at WebEx into the location field when you're scheduling a meeting. And that tells the Cisco WebEx platform that a meeting's been scheduled. Now, when you do that, when it's time to join a meeting, across the Cisco WebEx platform, the big green button, the join button shows up. So how do you join a meeting? You just hit that big green button, and you're in the meeting. We've done, we've done that consistently across our entire platform. The big green join button in WebEx Teams, in WebEx Meetings, in Jabber, and across our endpoint and even our phone portfolio. You guys want to see some of this? For those of you who have not seen the WebEx Meetings experience, here we go. So I'm on my desktop over here, and guess what? It's time to join a meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. So this is a new desktop app that we introduced as part of the redesign that we did last year. And I'm now in the meeting. It's video first. Beautiful high-definition video. This is the new WebEx in-meeting experience. We've added a ton of layouts. My favorite, the 5 by 5 You have 25 people in video. Isn't that beautiful? Now, you know, sometimes you're in a meeting, and you've got 25 people in there. You're going, you know, who's that guy who's talking too much, right? I can't remember who it is. We are adding a new feature. This is currently in beta. We're going to add a new feature where all you have to do is hover over that person. Oh, I know Angie. Now, she doesn't talk that much, but let me find out a little bit more about her. You click on her, and additional details about the participant props up, crops up in this little window on the side. Now, this is work-related information. It's public information, so you guys don't have to don't get scared. This is something you can turn off if you're not interested. Both you can control it and the IT administrator can control it. But you get additional relevant information about that person, including things like job history or recent news articles. The reason we are doing that is doing that allows you to make these meetings more personal. You know more about the person you're talking to. So this is a cool new feature that's currently in beta. It's coming to WebEx meetings soon. The other thing I wanted to show you was we love our meetings so much that if you know, you're being forced by IT or somebody is asking you to use, uh, let me go ahead and use this, uh, to use Microsoft Teams, I'm actually in Microsoft Teams, you can still use Cisco WebEx meetings. We've added a tab here, to Cisco WebEx tab. You can add that via toolbar. And this is the same meetings experience that you get with Cisco WebEx meetings. You can continue to use the beautiful meetings experience I showed you from within Microsoft Teams. Let me go back to the slides over here. So that's Cisco WebEx meetings. What about Cisco WebEx Teams? So let me talk about Cisco WebEx Teams. Cisco WebEx Teams is it's, it's a, it's a, it's our integrated collaboration suite. You can access calling, messaging, meeting, all from a single interface. It's a single unified client. You don't need to run multiple clients. Messaging, meeting, calling, sharing of files, whiteboarding, all integrated into a single client. Let me show you WebEx Teams. So I'm now in the, in the, in the WebEx Teams interface. You can see the, 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 the green button there. That's the same green button that I talked about. If I clicked on that, I'll be joining the same meeting that I was in before. That's because it's the same meeting. You can access the same meeting regardless of the Cisco tool you're using. You'll see some of the same functionality in our devices uh, as well. I'm going to switch over and go into one of the spaces over here. So there's a content management demo space. So this is the space you'd use to collaborate inside WebEx Teams. You can share files. You can message. Uh, you can whiteboard. And you can see I've got a conversation, go conversation going here with Luis. And, uh, uh, I think we've been having a conversation about uh, some of the Microsoft uh, integrations. And um, he's asking me to check out the MS integrations doc in this space. Uh, so I can, will do, did we add this feature to the list? Oops. So not only can I 
chat with him here, but I can go back and look at, he's actually posted a document over here. When I click on that document, you'll notice it opens up in a familiar interface. It's actually a OneDrive document. So when he uploaded the document, we reused the OneDrive license that you have. And I can now collaborate with him using OneDrive capability, capabilities from within WebEx Teams. You don't have to leave the WebEx Teams interface. So I've noticed he's added, um, he's added this over here. And you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Um, you know, I, I probably want, to, uh, want him to move that up. Uh, and let's see. I can take one of these uh, items, and I'm going to just move that up. Oh, there you go. He actually did that for me. So he's, he's going to fix up the document later. So, so you can see we are collaborating using OneDrive capabilities without leaving the WebEx, the WebEx Teams interface. Next slide. So what you just saw was Cisco collaboration working seamlessly with Microsoft productivity, whether it's Outlook whether it's uh, Word, whether it's OneDrive, we seamlessly integrate with the Microsoft productivity ecosystem. You know, Microsoft's got a pretty good productivity suite if you know, many of our customers are using that. Our approach to that is you can continue to use those tools, but they will seamlessly integrate with the Cisco collaboration tools, which we believe are way better than anything Microsoft has to provide. And by the way, we have a similar set of integrations with Google. So if you're using G Suite, you're using Google Calendar, you're using G Drive, the same integrations I showed you apply to the Google G Suite portfolio of products as, uh, as well. How do we make this possible? This is, this is made possible by the Cisco WebEx platform. The Cisco WebEx platform backs all of these experiences. We, build this plot, we built this platform over the last few years. It, it supports messaging, meeting, calling, sharing of files. All of our devices as well connect to this platform. The platform is built to be open, so you can access this functionality via a rich set of APIs, which you could integrate into your own applications. And then lastly, the platform is backed by a infrastructure investment that only Cisco can make. Over the last 10 years, we've invested tens of millions of dollars every single year to build out a backbone that supports this platform. We've got 23 data centers, which are connected by our own purpose-built media backbone. This is the backbone we've purpose-built for media. Because media is different from other kinds of traffic. You want to QoS it. You want to make sure the round-trip time, the latency is as small as possible. Because if you don't do that, meetings don't work. So Cisco has built its own, uh, own um, purpose-built media backbone. Now, if you'll notice, there's one small problem over here. Right? The coverage in Australia. You know, maybe isn't, isn't quite uh, in that circle. So what I'm, what I'm announcing today, I'm very, very pleased to announce that we are adding an additional data center in Sydney. And this will come live later this month. It's a 20 plus million dollar investment we are making in, in our Sydney data center. There we go. So a new data center based out of Sydney, 20 plus million dollar investment this will significantly reduce the latency that you see in meetings. You'll also get local phone numbers. So we'll have five local phone numbers in Australia. And we'll also be adding newer calling plans, which are fixed rate calling plans. So you don't have to pay by the minute when you're using Cisco WebEx meetings. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Sandeep to talk, of, talk about some of our video experiences. Thank you, Javed. Well, if you all didn't know, Javed is also somebody who, ha who helps save a lot of marriages. So his meetings really make uh, all of our lives a lot more simpler in terms of how we sort of engage in this global world. So I'm going to sort of uh, flip next and talk about smart workspaces and the importance within our workplace transformation. Right? Uh, if you were thinking about a workplace transformation sort of exercise in any of your offices, this is something that you've probably seen, which is how do you drive amazing within in terms of experiences for your employees? Now, we've taken this exercise in terms of really trying to understand what does smart mean? By the way, just by way of context, anybody over here have a self-driving car? Few hands, okay. Well, one of the things that if you think about the self-driving car, 
it is that it's got intelligence built in at the core. So what we've done is we've taken that same intelligence, the same chipsets. So in fact, it's the NVIDIA chipset, which, which has AI and, and deep learning built into it, and we put it into our entire portfolio. And what that means is that you then have these devices just like your self-driving car with similar sort of capabilities. So just like a car, which really has all that intelligence of knowing the curb, you know, where you need to turn, where you need to watch out for, for the other pedestrians. Well, in the context of the meeting room, these devices have similar sensors. They know who's in the room, who's engaged, who's speaking, how many people are there in that particular room, and the fact that, you know, how do we really drive that employee engagement? Also, we've spent a lot of time actually providing some training data and really driving that machine learning capability into all of these devices. So we know, and we spent a huge amount of time really looking at human voices and other voices. In fact, our engineers spent uh, over 200 hours collecting samples of different sorts of dogs, right? So that when you see, you see or hear barking sounds, we can suppress those. For that matter, what we've also then done with all of this intelligence is to be able to connect the dots. When, were, when did you join the meeting? How many people were in these particular meetings? And were they able to drive these amazing experiences? We've connected all those dots and presented this to you in, in the form of a graph. So you can then actually use this information to really drive the next level of contextual experiences. So that was about how we're really taking the concept of intelligence and bringing that into the workplace. But let me take you a little step further in terms of how we're really taking that, that, that experience, and we want to really drive scale around that. And particularly, it's, 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 a, it's an area that we've focused on really around the huddle space. So just to set context, there is a new way that you've probably all seen you know, of, of working in, in the office, in the workplace. It is the fact that teams, they band together in, in magical ways very quickly. They disband too. They need teams which are, they, they need tools which are very informal and which are agile. So they need to come together, they need to disband, and very quickly have, have some decisions. Now, if you think about those tools within your offices, they actually probably are missing in many ways. So we did a survey, and we found that you know, over half of the folks said that the technology was inconsistent. It just didn't give them an experience which, which really you know, helped them sort of communicate and collaborate. For that matter, over three quarters said that the experience was terrible because it was just so, it, it just didn't make sense because it was different parts of, of uh, this technology which was put together and it was inconsistent. So if you really think about what is it that your users are looking for, one, it is something where they can collaborate and communicate from anywhere within your office space. Even the corner, which is in, in one of the buildings, can you actually do a quick huddle and, and get together? Absolutely. Second, it has to be dropped that simple. One click, or for that matter, hey, is there a way to make it even intelligent where it has facial recognition and it can just start? And lastly, you know, is there a capability for IT to manage that at scale? And I think we've spent a lot of time really taking all of these factors into account, and we believe we've, we have cracked the code. So we've spent a lot of time really looking at all these ways that you can drive that amazing experience and built a portfolio which can drive that scale. So I want to take you through a little journey in terms of a couple of these products. The first one is actually our co-creation product, which allows for amazing teaming and co-creation, right? So, and this happens, this is a journey that I go through every day in my life where I'm in my office, I meet up with a colleague, and very quickly we're able to you know, get around this device and very quickly co-create with folks in the office as well as from anywhere. But we've also done some uh, other amazing things. And I want to show you one of these devices, right? the WebEx Share. It's a dongle. It's a device which basically plugs into any sort of monitor, any sort of uh, 
flat screen display, and it becomes a, dis uh, a, a display device for my content. So ever had that situation where eight of you are actually hovering around a laptop and trying to you know, actually share that presentation? Have you ever had that? Yeah? Well, that's, a, that's, that's in the past because with WebEx Share, you can really take you know, note of that and, and change that, that experience. The other amazing experience that we've taken in terms of intelligence is to bring it into how you can start communicating. And that's in our RoomKit Mini. It's, it's a device that has seen tremendous offtake from, from our customers. And I'd like to show you how all of these three devices now can actually come alive in a demo experience. Would you like that? Yeah? yeah? OK. So I've actually got my team in Oslo who are, it's, it's 6 a.m. in the morning, so be kind to them. But they're going to come on, on, on stage. And hey, Tobias, hey, Espen, can you take us through the new experiences and the new products that uh, our team has built? Sure, we can do. Hello, Melbourne. Uh, we're calling from Oslo, Norway, and uh, we are huddled together in a small meeting room using the brand new Rookit Mini. It's designed for rooms up to five people, uh, so you can think of it as a room kit, but smaller. Yeah. Uh, it's also a single screen system where people will sit close to the screen. So the RoomKit Mini has an extreme wide angle camera. It's as much as 120 degree field of view. And I can sit so close that I just reach out and touch the camera. So with this extreme camera view, we need to use the powerful RoomKit Mini hardware to straighten out the fisheye effect. Uh, so we can quickly demonstrate sure. that. Yeah. So. What you see here, this is the raw camera feed. You can see the bent lines and the curved edges of the image. It might look funny, but it's really not that great. Yeah. So maybe we can go back to the corrected Cisco view, yeah. please. There you go. And also, like the rest of the portfolio, the camera is automatic in the RoomKit Mini uh, using something we call Best View. So you don't need to worry about camera control. If I go out and enable Best View, uh, you can see the, uh, the system automatically uh, zooms in to, uh, to us in the room. So, and as most of you guys probably have noticed already, is that we have our name tags here as well. So, throughout the whole room portfolio, we can support all of those AI features. Mm -hmm. So, let's see if we can challenge it, this a bit. I'll put my uh, Clark Kent Superman reading glasses on and uh, yeah. Still recognizes me, not too bad. Yeah. And uh, if I enter my Saturday night, mm, let my hair down for the, uh, for the evening. Yeah. It still works. That's really nice. You should wear that more often. As <laughs> yeah, well. yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I keep hearing that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we can kind of quickly jump into something a bit more serious. Uh, so let's go and, uh, and look at the, uh, the diagnostic mode. Uh, it's kind of a behind the scenes view. Uh, this is where you can see uh, how we uh, pick up the faces in the room. Uh, that's indicated by the green box. We also have a gray square, as you can see here. That is the cropped image that you just saw in the best view mode. So the, the image that we actually sent to the far end. And finally, we also have the people count in the upper corner. So we actively count the number of people present in the room at any given time. Yes, and so to ensure an easy and flexible installation, the RoomKit Mini can be mounted either above or below the screen. It's a complete system with built-in speakers and microphones. And of course, it's been designed to be uh, installed both on-premise and in the cloud. Yeah. That's it from us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, T Tobias, and thank you, Espin. It's 6 in the morning. Love, you, love your energy. <laughs> so uh, quickly moving forward. So really, we have had the amazing, amazing portfolio to cover all those large meeting rooms. But now with our Huddle Space portfolio, we truly can help you cover all those other spaces within your organization and truly drive you know, that workplace transformation. Now, all of this. Fundamentally, if you think about how it all comes together, it is on a single unified platform that only Cisco has been able to, only Cisco out there can really deliver. So we believe that we can have you deliver that, that workplace transformation experience to everybody in your organization through this platform. Thank you very much, and I look forward to any questions over the session.